Right, so we'll, ca we'll crack on with the day then. So as Alvin just mentioned, we're going to talk about this report. So in 2018, the fourth group and partners ran a global inquiry into citizens in the digital age. And today marks the launch of that report. So to talk us through that report, I'd like to invite onto the stage Nizam Uddin. Where's Nizam? Is he there? There we go. Round of applause for Nizam Uddin, please. And I try and keep clapping until he comes to the stage because it's very awkward to walk on. There we go. Keep going. Keep going. Right, he's here. Excellent. Couldn't have picked the worst seat. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Nizam uh, Uddin. I am representing a wonderful institution today called SOAS, uh, which is School of Oriental African Studies, where I'm a trustee, um, and we are one of the community partners. So to introduce, I... Over the weekend, like many of you, uh, was watching the centenary commemoration for uh, 100 years since the end of the armistice. Um, and it really dawned on me, made me think, um, what were many of those men in particular, but actually men and women who sacrificed, millions of them uh, from across the world, what were they sacrificing themselves for? What values, what freedoms do we now take for granted uh, that we forget about um, very regularly. And it really made me think over the weekend some of the things that we possibly take for granted right now. And in particular, um, and there's some really interesting uh, works out there around when people went out, what were the values that they were fighting for? What, what would the world have looked like if in either great war, if it had flipped to the other side? What would we be talking about today? And it really, really makes me think. Um, of course, 100 years later, uh, the world is a drastically different place. The fact that we're having a conversation today about a tech revolution and digital technologies are transforming the way we live. Um, just on my way here, you know, I jump, uh, jumped into an Uber, the way we work. I'll be working remotely today, the way we play. Uh, I won't talk about my love life, uh, it's a whole different ball game, but it transforms and transcends every part of our lives. And for the most part, that's brilliant. It's exciting. Um, so yesterday, I, I'm sure you'll appreciate, I have an iPhone and I yanked my cable and I you know, broke or whatever. Um, and I wanted a new one. So I went on Amazon and I bought a new one. It's going to arrive in the next 60 minutes. That was at 5 p.m. Um, it's amazing, right? I, I have Amazon Prime, and very quickly I, I have my cable. Brilliant luxury, brilliant convenience. Um, in the context of today, I, just, I was just thinking, what have I compromised for that service? For that luxury, what have I given away? What data have I given away? Uh, on the way here, just looking at Google, uh, I asked Alexa in the morning, what's the weather like today? Um, and again, asking Alexa what the weather's like, I realize I am promoting Amazon heavily. There are other, I feel like a very, it's like a BBC commercial. There are other providers out there in the market. Um, but it, make, it makes me think, what have we compromised to do that? Um, and in many ways, actually, there is a compromise to every single thing that we take for granted. And juxtaposed to the very visceral and tangible values and freedoms that were being fought, that we celebrated over the weekend, I asked myself, do we as citizens in this digital age ask ourselves what values, freedoms do we compromise every single day, um, especially when we're transacting them for the sake of luxury. Um, and what's interesting is, whilst I'm representing SOAS here, in my daily life I work for the Prince's Trust, uh, which is a young person's charity uh, working across the country. And every year we have a survey where we ask our young people how they're doing. This year is a year where un unemployment for young people is at a record low. Um, but uncertainty amongst young people is at a record high. And the reason for that is many. Uh, you, can, you can point to political situations like Brexit, but actually, for a lot of young people, 65% of jobs that they're gonna go into doesn't exist right now because it's all machines and robots and AI and so on and so forth. So that level of uncertainty is something which affects us day to day. Um, and so, what this global inquiry does into citizens in the digital age is to better understand the voice of the citizens, especially at a time when actually I would argue we are passive observers in this wonderful system of digital life. Um, how critically minded are we? 
Um, and so actually what I, what I love about the work the fourth group and Alvin are doing is actually asking the very questions that I've been asking over the weekend. Um, and so some of those questions, um, and this is where what's wonderful is, and you have them right here. Um, what are citizens' rights and responsibilities in the digital age? What are the biggest problems caused by technology? And what can we practically do as citizens to respond to this problem? Um, and importantly, I think part of it is just asking the question, because quite often I think people aren't asking those questions uh, because life's good. Um, you know, yesterday, today's 13 degrees Celsius, Alexa told me. You know, it's amazing. I'm coming out having a great day, but in the back of my mind, am I cognizant of the wider consequences of what those 13 degrees look like for the next generation, whether that's climate change, whether it's something else. And I think that's what this inquiry is doing, adding that level of cognizance that doesn't exist. So the methodology, um, and I'm going to use my phone now because I did make some notes about this, even though it's up there. Um, you had an online in-depth survey. You had 400 people across 40 countries because again, the experience of digital life here, very different to something that's happening in other parts of the world. You had 12 plus focus groups digging a bit deeper across eight countries. And it's important to note those, the online survey wasn't one of those quick and easy ones, which we're used to as a one-click generation. It was in depth. Uh, and so there was lots of questions there which were really, really, really important. And I can speak on behalf of SOAS. The reason why we were really interested in being involved in this is again, part of the curriculum at SOAS is to help students become critically engaged with their society. And that's what this inquiry is doing. And with the help of nine other amazing partners, um, One Young World, Democracy to Earth, Color Content, Pan-African Human Rights Defenders, Kumu.ph, SOAS, Forum 280, Global Social Entrepreneurship Network, New Speak House, Quartz, the University of Queensland, Entrepreneur First. Can we give them all a round of applause, please? Um, <laughs> Alvin and his team were able to try and unearth some of these questions and the difficulty, and this is the last thing I'll say before I go off, the difficulty is how do you get people to answer questions on issues when you, they don't know what they don't know? And I think that's part of what the inquiry does first and foremost, which is to make it relevant. And I think this, this is scratching the surface and I think this work that's being unearthed right now is gonna be critically important and I look forward to the rest of the conversation. Thank you very much.